Hey everybody, welcome to our introduction video for the Cypher System Starter Course. Uh, Cypher System is made by Monty Cook Games, and it is a system that I would say has a fair bit of combat and combat mechanics to it, but is mostly story based. I would highly recommend this system to anybody who hasn't played tabletop RPGs ever. Before we dive into this, uh, you're going to get used to the format here, I'm going to get used to teaching to a computer, and we're just going to see how far we can go. The starter course should take us 9 to 10 videos, and once we're done with the starter course, then we get to do the fun stuff like building your characters and world building. So let's get through all of the basics together, and then we can do the goodies. You are welcome to pause these videos at any time if you need to jot something down. If you want just a quick rundown of how to play the system, it's right here. The first thing you're going to do as a player is tell your GM, which stands for a Game Master, what you want to do. When you do that, you are doing your character action. For example, say you wanted to uh, ride the Triceratops. You would just have to let your DM know that that's what you want to do. Now, riding a Triceratops would require a couple of rolls. If you wanted to do something more simple, like walking across the room, that would require no rolls and have a difficulty of zero. The second thing that's going to happen is your Game Master will go through and figure out if there's a difficulty to the task or if there's a chance of failure. If there's a chance of failure, that's when you would set the difficulty. Difficulty is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, and 10 is nearly impossible to impossible depending on the game that you're running. Routine actions work without needing a roll, like I said. Examples of that are opening a door or walking across the room. If your, cha if your task has a chance of failure, the Game Master will determine which stats the task uses. Might, Speed, and Intellect, the MSI, remember that, Might, Speed, Intellect, it's very important. So important, in fact, that I would say, put it in your notes. If you have a character sheet in front of you somewhere, jot it down, MSI. Uh, the next thing that's going to happen is uh, you and your Game Master will work together to decide if anything about your character can modify the difficulty. If anything your character has if anything your character has reduced the difficulty to one, that would make the action routine. So when you modify the difficulty, and we'll get into that a little later in the video, you can technically knock like the difficulty down to one or zero, meaning you don't have to roll. If your action isn't routine, that's when your difficulty comes in. Your goal is to hit the target number, which is three times the task difficulty. So, for example, a task with a difficulty of four has a target number of 12. Your Game Master doesn't have to tell you the target number. Uh, I don't normally. I think it's fun that way. But this is something that you would need to discuss in your Section 0, or Session 0, excuse me, and that's something we will cover way down the line when we do the DM's introduction and if you don't know what DM means that's just Dungeon Master it's Dungeons and Dragons lingo it's the same as a G Game Master or GM the next thing you're gonna do is roll a d20 and if that roll is equal to or higher than the target number you'll succeed that's it that is the bare bones basics to the system now let's dive into some more details before we do that, let's discuss what we will be covering in this video. We will go over the taking action, when to roll, and we will discuss task difficulty. Then we will talk about modifying the difficulty, and then I'm going to introduce you to the glossary section. For this video, this might seem pretty short. Uh, I try to keep these under 20 minutes if we happen to go over. I apologize. Let's dive in. Taking action. 
Okay, so an action is going to take one turn each round. When it comes to your turn, you will be able to take your action. The MSI, or Might, Speed, and Intellect, are the three action categories. Now most of your tasks have a difficulty of zero, and that means it will succeed automatically. Examples of tasks with a difficulty of zero are things like walking across a room, opening a door, picking something off the floor, throwing a stone in a nearby bucket. None of these actions would require a roll. Tasks with a higher difficulty will require a roll normally, like riding that triceratops or jumping out of a burning plane and doing three backflips into a convertible. Now, when do you roll? You're going to roll anytime the GM tells you to. And when you roll for a task, you'll be rolling a d20 normally. Jumping from a burning car is a good example of a task that will require you to roll unless your character is just that good. And that's, again, just a d20 roll. Uh, before we move on, I want to say your GM will tell you when to roll, or you can ask if you can roll, but it's basic table etiquette to not toss the dice around unless you have asked your game master beforehand. I would suggest that you do not toss out your d20 and be like, I rolled to take three backflips. No. Ask your game master first, because sometimes you might not even need to roll. And what I do is, if you don't need to roll, but you insist on rolling the dice and moving out of turn and all that other stuff, I'll just assign a task difficulty where there didn't even need to be one. If your task has a difficulty of zero, then you automatically succeed. Tasks with a difficulty of zero are called routine actions, and they don't require rolls. I want to drill this home because, again, the cipher system is not rolling dice every 10 seconds. It's not that complex. Now, you can lower or decrease the difficulty of a potential task using effort, skills, and assets. Using this, any of these three, maybe even all three, can eliminate the need to roll at all. So we're going to dive in a little deeper to task difficulty. All of your tasks will relate to either might, which is physical activities, and tasks that require strength, power, or endurance. Your speed, which is the physical activities that would require agility, flexibility, or fast reflexes. Your intellect, which is your force of will and mental power, and anything that revolves around your intelligence. And that's it. That again is the MSI. You must remember the MSI. Uh, your roles can also be summarized in these three categories. And effort is determined by what category the task or role falls under, and we'll cover effort a little further down the line. You can also modify the task difficulty, which is what we're going to be getting into right now. There is a very large section in both the Rules Primer and the Player's Handbook that discusses everything you do as a GM when it comes to modifying the task difficulty. We're not going to cover that right now. Uh, that's for a Game Master's Guide somewhere down the line. But what I will tell you is that your task is rated on a difficulty of 1 to 10. Your target number is always three times the difficulty. And the closer you get to 10, the harder the task is to complete. Again, we are going to reiterate this. This is the most basic information. So how do you, as the player, modify the difficulty? Well, your character's level of skill is measured by two things. And that is trained. So if your character is trained, you have reasonable skill. Uh, and you can ease the task by one step. If your character is specialized in a skill, you are very skilled and you can ease the task by two steps. A skill 
will never ease a task by more than two steps, period. You can also use assets, but those will also never ease a task by more than two steps. We will cover assets in the glossary. And then you can use effort, and effort will take three points from the relevant stat pool. And when you do this, it will ease the task by one step, unless your character is higher leveled. There's a ton of modifiers that go into it, but bare bones basics, it will ease the task by one step. And as another reminder, if you ease your task to zero, you will automatically succeed. There is no need to roll. So now let's cover the glossary. When I put a glossary at the end of these videos, it's just so you can understand like basic terms. So first we have the asset, and an asset is help from like a party member, equipment, or anything that's related to those two things. Hindering is the complete opposite of easing. So uh, say you were running across uh, the street when a massive earthquake hits and it starts dividing the earth. That would hinder your character's ability to move. Modifiers are something that attack uh, excuse me, affect the difficulty of the player role. And a skill is a category of knowledge. The three keys to the game are MSI, might, speed, and intellect. Remember them. And again, all of this, all of this information, not word for word, but all of the information is available in the rules. I highly suggest picking up your own copy of the player's handbook for the cipher system and giving it a read. I condensed information here and there is a lot more to learn. Uh, if you liked this video, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you'd like, have a good day, night, evening, or whatever.